Cool. All right. So this is week two of uh, of Crucial Python. We're going to cover some some iter iterating tools. And uh, if I don't know where you guys at are at with Python, but uh, some of this stuff you may have seen before, but probably you haven't used all of it. And hopefully there'll be at least one thing that you're super excited about. Um, there's our logo again. Um, so. As you may know, in, in, in Python, a lot of objects are iterable. Um, they're generators that you can iterate over them in a for loop. And Python makes it really clean to do that. So if you have something like a list, which has you know, objects of various types, you can iterate over the objects really simply in a for loop like that. So I'm just printing out each item in the, in the list. Um, another example of an, of an iterable, I guess I should say instead of a gen, an iterator, an iterable is, uh, is a file object. So I can open a file and iterate over the lines in it. Um, the main difference here is that this, the file object doesn't have a length. It's reading it um, from disk. Um, it doesn't load it into memory before it reads it. So um, where that comes into play pretty quickly is if you want, let's say you want to iterate over an object, but you want uh, a variable which is the index of whatever um, item you're reading from the generator. Um, what a lot of people do especially early on, um, is they'll do something like this, where they say, um, for n in x range or range of the length of the list, and then they get items from the list by indexing the list or, or object. Um, so this is just an example where I'm getting the, getting the items from the list and populating a dict optionally based on properties of, uh, of the list. Um, but sometimes you can't get the length of the, the generator. Um, and also, this isn't really very clean. And fortunately, there's, there's actually a, a built, in, built into Python. It's not even in a separate module function called enumerate, um, which will, as it is iterated over, it generates the, um, the index and the item. So here I'm populating again the dict um, and uh, except I don't have to do this explicit um, indexing of the, of the array. And that'll make a lot of your code cleaner. Um, a situation where a lot of people, so g given that, a lot of people will still get the indices of the items in the, in the generators um, if they have multiple uh, objects that they want to index. So here's an example where I have three lists. They're all the same length. And I want to get objects from each of them. So I'm getting the indices, and then I'm indexing them, but also keeping track of where I am. And again, there's a cleaner way to do this in Python, and that's with zip. Um, zip takes a, a, any number of generators and uh, will output items from those generators at the same time. Um, so this, again, arguably makes your code cleaner. And if you're now, now you're saying, OK, that's cool, but what if I still need the index? Well, you can, actually, you can enumerate over a zip. And that looks like this. Um, so the point is that really you, sh you should, in Python, you pretty rarely have to index something, which makes your code cleaner. Um, and these are kind of you know, a little bit silly examples. But um, outside of these built-ins, um, there's a nice package called iter tools, which the way that I would look at it is like if you're ever trying to do something kind of weird with for loops, then you can probably use an iter tools function and it'll look much nicer. Um, and if, so if you're ever thinking, okay, I, I want to like, you know, get all of the items from here and combine them with all the items from here, look at the iter tools documentation and there's probably a function that'll do it for you. Um, one, one that's, that's pretty useful is if you, let's say you have, um, two lists and you want to, or sorry, two generators and you want to iterate over the items in the first generator and then iterate over the items in the second or even a third and a fourth. Um, one way to do that would be with multiple for loops, but there's, there's a nice iter tools function called chain, which just iterates over the first argument, the, the generator in the first argument and then the second one and so on. And the nice thing here is that again, you can combine generators of different types. Like if you had two lists, you could just concatenate them. But here, I'm first I'm iterating over the lines in this file, which is one type of generator, and then I'm iterating over the list. And you can see it just goes through as if it's one massive generator. Um, if you noticed before, um, 
zip would only work for items that have the same, or sorry, generators that have the same number of items. Um, and so if you have things that might not have the same number of items, you can use iZip, um, which will stop when it runs out of items in one of the generators. And then if you can also use iZip longest, which won't stop, it'll keep going, and then just keep outputting none for the generator, which has run out of objects. Uh, there's also the two that I end up using pretty often are permutations and combinations, which just take the items in the generator and combine them in every possible way. So permutations uh, is an ordered list without repetition. So it won't ever output dang, dang, or cool, cool, but it'll output all the combinations. And combinations will uh, not repeat elements in the unordered sense. So it's, it's, you know, it's the same terms that you would use in probability. And finally, the last thing I wanted to mention is list comprehension, which is like a truly beautiful uh, construct in, in Python, basically where you can create lists um, using an, a for loop inside the list. Uh, so kind of an example that I think people, a, a line of code that people write a lot is something like this, where they want to get all of the lines in a text file. So you can, if you want to generate a list of all the lines in a text file, you can do that in one readable line, which is um, basically saying, a list of the lines for each line in open file. So this will just output all of the lines in the file. And it's really not very, it's the, the limitations, there, are, there aren't that many limitations to this. You can apply functions to each of the items that get, um, that get output by the, the generator. So here I'm, I'm using, applying the strip function to each line, which removes the new line at the end of the line. Um, and you can also apply conditional statements at the end here. So it's saying, you know, for line and open, if the line does not contain the substring another. So this is just outputting these first two items because these two have the word another in them. And finally, you can also do nested list comprehension, which is, which is insane and awesome, um, where basically you have uh, two for loops in the list comprehension, and, and it actually operates by the furthest right for loop first. So it's basically writing it like, a, it's, it's as if you wrote a nested for loop, except it's all in one line. Um, and so here I'm, I'm reading in two different files, reading in all the lines into one list. Um, so that, that looks like this. Um, and uh, yeah, the easiest, the easiest way to remember how to do this is it it's, looks just like a nested for loop, except the, the most nested loop is to the right. Um, and again, I would argue that this is like really readable code and it's only one line. And it's what you would, it would take like at least four lines to do in another programming language. So that's some iteration stuff. Hopefully some of that was new for you. It's cool stuff. Thanks. Yeah.